Greetings patrons, I finally managed to record my screen. So I uh, figured I would um, record a little video for you. Uh, yesterday I started a track with stems that I uh, recorded with my Alex uh, Durisbury. And uh, I had a question in my inbox about um, a person who felt that they had a bit of problems with uh, uh, finishing tracks. They, he felt that uh, he was making uh, music and um, that the tracks were getting there, but they were always missing like one element. And that element maybe is the most important one, so it's uh, hard to finish the track. And I have some uh, ideas on that. And uh, the way I made this track is a good example. Uh, what I do a lot is that I r record stuff uh, beforehand. Um, for instance, uh, in this case, I had a jam with Alex. So uh, we just simply uh, had fun, uh, recorded sounds, and uh, didn't uh, really think about what to do with it. Um, so uh, in eventually I got like three hours of recordings. Uh, that I got like this here, wait, not that one, here. For instance, uh, yeah, so three hours of recordings, uh, I sat with it for like two days, um, and just really listening to every second of these uh, two, hour, two, three hours, and uh, recording tiny parts that I like, and we can listen to some here. It doesn't sound like much. But it's something, you know? When you're there making music, you start with uh, an, an element, maybe you start with a kick, and you can't think of anything to do, so you just maybe just go like this. Yeah, this sounds cool, so you put that in. And you start fiddling and maybe you get in the in the vibe or you don't and if you don't you can just go in here again and find another element and then um, eventually maybe you start feeling the vibe and you start building the tracks with new sounds and mixing it maybe with other sessions and uh, putting in your uh, soft synths or whatever and start uh, building a track or maybe you don't get inspired uh, you sat there for two hours and still sound like shit. Okay, uh, say whatever parts you made that are interesting and just delete it. And then the next day you try again. And eventually, after one year, you will have made uh, five albums. <laughs> uh, but anyways, uh, we will um, have a look at this or a listen here. It sounds like this. It's it's basically just a. Uh, a loop. It um, took me 25 minutes to make uh, because I work like this. Uh, so I'm, yeah, I'm uh, working on uh, previous efforts, you could say, and it sounds like this. Yeah, so um, we have some examples that I want to show. For instance, is it this? Yeah, this one, you can hear. I mean, this is just noise. It was basically, I guess, something like this. You know, it was just like remnants of a delay, probably some scraps uh, from my uh, Rainmaker. So when we shut off the, the music, uh, the delay kept going for a while. And when I was sitting there with the recording, I really listened and I, and I heard this and I'm like, wow, what's going on in there and I just uh, cranked it up and I uh, went into all these tr uh, transients as you can see here I put them in beat because when this recording was new these transients were all over the place and it, wa it wasn't rhythmical and now if we listen to it in context It's uh, kind of interesting. And uh, then uh, another interesting uh, thing I have done in this um, uh, project. Um, well, 
it, it's a technique at least that maybe some of you uh, can benefit from. It's with this uh, tool called uh, Mixing Key. I've been using it for 12 years as a DJ and recently they released it uh, as a studio version where you can put it on any track and it analyzes the key uh, of that uh, sound. So you can hear in what uh, key the sounds are. Um, I don't have a lot of uh, musical training. Uh, I have uh, done some courses in the university on musical uh, uh, musical theory. Uh, so I know a bit now, but still I don't have the ear. I can't play or anything like that. So it's uh, nice for me to um, have this kind of analyzing tool that I can place on my recordings. Because when we make these recordings or when I'm just uh, screaming vocals or playing my jaw harp and doing all weird stuff uh, there's no way for me to keep track of what key and I don't have the ear or training to know so this just saves me a lot of time of trying to find the right melodies uh, so it just uh, works like this you put it on your channel and you just play the sound and this is, see it's a G flat D flat uh, minor uh, B flat, yeah. Um, and these uh, tones and chords have uh, because these you, you can. This is the uh, B minor, uh, G sharp, no G flat minor, and D flat minor. So what I did was I googled uh, like. Uh, uh, let's see if I can do it here. Just G flat minor. And I just look, look like this is very in ineffective. <laughs> it's because I don't know, whatever. And, and I just look um, what notes are in a G flat minor scale. And then I also looked at D flat minor and I looked which ones are the same in these two chords because uh, those notes will sound a lot like this layer or track. And then I put them like this. Uh, in a kind of melody. With just a simple arpeggiator through the uh, Ableton's Wavetable synth, which is uh, basically the only soft synth I use these days. I think it's amazing. It always, uh, I, I can do whatever I, what I need with it. Uh, I mean, I have Serum and Surge and these kind of things also, but uh, more advanced synthesis I do with my modular and uh, usually I just want some uh, make some melodies like this or uh, even some weird stuff sometimes uh, you, you can do a lot with this and it's actually a really really good synth I think and uh, so inspiring I mean uh, looking at this like this is so amazing I mean I can this is all I need this is all I will ever need uh, Let's see how the hell do I close this now? Here. Uh, so yeah, then I have this uh, melody. This. So that's that. And then there's another technique that I have uh, recently found out about. Maybe most of you know it. I didn't. Uh, here in the clip uh, view, you have the uh, different warp modes uh, beats it's uh, i think it's the it's the default for uh, ableton and usually it's in transient mode but you can change it here to read in uh, intervals and uh, then you can change kind of like the how they are reading each interval for instance in this case it reads it one time and then it waits until the next interval starts but you can also sh choose that it will read it many times until the next uh, interval starts and it can read it f uh, forward, backward, forward, backward until it, the next section begins. And I think this is the basic uh, setting, which I never really bothered to care much about. Uh, usually it's just like this when you use it in beats and I usually just change it to complex pro or whatever. Uh, but now I, uh, I use the beats and I uh, try with the 16, um, 16 note segments. And it plays only one time, and if you instant, if you listen to this original uh, vocal recording, 
And this also, by the way, ties into this idea that uh, I use myself, <laughs> kind of. Uh, this is a recording from a new moon uh, ceremony that I did. It's a very intimate personal uh, experience where I was really exploring the vibrations of my body when I was singing. So I was singing, screaming, making weird no noises for many hours. Um, and then I was sitting there in the same time like an evil little gnome pressing re record so that I could use it later for my evil experiments. <laughs> uh, so basically I'm just um, being, this is important to be uh, present and be, um, when you sit with an instrument, uh, just uh, sit with it, be present and uh, and grateful for having the chance to sit with it and make uh, sounds and just uh, be there and don't think about where you want to take it. Just sit there with it and just um, spend time with the sound and the instrument. Uh, that is one way uh, and a very important part of my music production. And uh, what I do is I do that and then when I find something that I really, really inspires me I hit record and I record that for a little bit and then I, I shut record off and then I go back into being with the instrument and I don't think I don't care about how it sounded what it can be used for or anything like that I just spend time with the sound and the instrument and then later uh, when I'm uh, uh, more how do you say in a sober not sober um, more like in in the day I have like office hours where I sit for hours and hours with these uh, be beautiful recordings that I've made and uh, I pay my respect to that moment by organizing them into folders so that I can use them creatively later. Uh, like, like this recording um, I'm showing you now. You know, this is a, it's, it's a very intimate kind of thing. It's a joke, uh, but still it also comes from the heart and it's very um, inspired by our folk uh, songs and uh, folk tales about gnomes and all these kind of things. You know, it um, it's storytelling kind of. Uh, anyway, um, let's listen to this effect when I pull this envelope kind of thing down, which make it read um, each segment faster so we, you have a silence before the next one uh, begins so it's a very cool effect uh, it's a shame that you can't automate this uh, but what you can do is you can just resample it uh, if you don't know how to resample, it's the Google resample in Ableton or something, and uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, I, I think that's uh, about, uh, that's all I wanted to show you. Um, I, uh, yeah, but um, I, I can show you my folders just uh, quickly. Uh, as you see, li like I said, um, I um, have a session with my modular, I just n noodle with it. Uh, relax and uh, enjoy the sound and then when I really like mind blown by something I just leave it for a while and I just let it pulsate and I just close my eyes maybe sit down lay down and just listen to it and this is the basis for my ether mechanics uh, magnetic meditation devices album uh, just this uh, meditative uh, interaction with uh, the modular synthesizer where you um, just uh, unplug and uh, I mean unplug your mind and just uh, float away in the drone or uh, uh, in, in the waves um, and I felt that these in that case that the, the waves I didn't need to do any tracks with them because I just wanted to be raw like that and that's why I made an album with 12 drones which can be kind of weird uh, I think it has a mixed reception uh, people who heard it but I think people who really takes time to get into that uh, peace of mind can find something that's pleasing 
I mean, this is the basis for most uh, um, this hype around modular is that uh, time that you spend with the drones and I think it's nice to share that uh, that kind of moments. But uh, also, uh, of course, what I do is uh, record uh, short uh, segments and I do this with uh, everything, um, uh, with my modular, uh, if I do it with the Jew harp, for instance, here I have long recordings that I haven't had a chance to l listen to yet. And that's not, these are not so long, but you see this is like very long. And low, so what I do is I go into them and I make uh, these kind. Just make sure they are in, in beat, like dun dun, like they're really in beat, so I don't have to do that later. Uh, unless I want to make it off beat, but then I can do that. Um, but most usually I want it in beat. So. And you hear that. Just make sure that all these artifacts, for me, that's what I do, is put these in beat. Because when I play it like that, it's kind of accidents. There, so they are not in beat. But when you put it in beat, it makes a cool uh, percussive effect. Now, yeah, so. And then I just build tracks with this, like uh, for instance this track. Uh, I started with the kick and I just threw in the bass and I started, oh, started sounding nice and I threw in this and this and this and this and eventually I had a track in 25 minutes that sounded like this. So uh, yeah, that's my brief advice for you today. Uh, I sent this track to Alex and he was very excited about it. So uh, I'm going to send some stems to him and he just has his new Space Echo uh, repaired. So we are planning to run some of these sounds through that uh, before starting to put uh, really, uh, at least me, I will put a lot of time into the arrangement. Uh, I want to make something very special with this. Uh, uh, yeah, with the collaboration with Alex, we are having a very nice vibe, so I think we can potentially make a lot of uh, uh, interesting music. Um, yeah, well, thank you, as always, for your support. Now I will take the weekend off to uh, uh, enjoy some rest, so uh, I hope you will have the chance to do the same. Uh, bye.